can you keep more than one rooster in a flock at the same time? Well, I'm going to tell you about my experiences with keeping more than one rooster, sometimes a lot more than one rooster in my flock. And then after I tell you all about how I get along with my roosters and my flock all together, we're going to talk about the specific factors you really need to think about if you're going to consider keeping more than one rooster in your flock at any one time. In my flock I have two mature roosters that cruise around all the time all together they're not separated from each other at any point now I started my flock with one rooster and that is Kowalski he's my bard rock rooster he's a real cool dude and uh, he's not the most energetic of roosters so I hatched Kowalski out uh, as an egg here on the property back Oh, quite a while ago now. He must be around four years old at this point. And I kept him and he grew up with the hens I already had in the flock and sort of took on his role as a rooster. And he has been a really, really great guy. He's just, I love him so much. He just does all the things a rooster needs to do. And by, what I mean by all the things a rooster needs to do is he is attentive to his hens. He looks out for danger. He makes sure that the hens are getting the food so he doesn't rush in and gobble the food up just for himself. He calls his hens over and makes sure that they're getting their food. He goes out and finds tasty things for them. He scratches up the ground and finds them worms. He's very caring, very attentive. But because he's such a good rooster, he gets pretty tired. <laughs> he works so hard looking after his hens that he gets tired. And he's also a heavy breed rooster, which means he's not the highest energy dude that there is around. So as I started to get more hens in my flock, the hen numbers are creeping up, Kowalski started to look a bit stressed out. And so I thought to myself, well, I think he needs a bit of help. So I decided to keep another rooster from one of my hatches and that was a rooster called Wendell who doesn't live here anymore but he was my first main experience of keeping a rooster through to adulthood in the flock and it worked out really really well. So Wendell hatched out, he grew up and he just integrated into the family structure of the flock and it was really nice to see. He was a great dad to the chicks that he fathered and that's a little interesting story. So I expected that Kowalski and Wendell would probably father about the same even number of chicks because that's sort of about the number of hens they had each but that's not what happened. Wendell ended up being the father of every single chick for that breeding season. And I was thinking to myself, well, Kowalski dude, like I know, I know you were getting a bit tired, but come on. So that made me think, well, if I want to keep my breeding program going, I'm going to have to make sure I keep a younger rooster in the flock at all times. Now, while Wendell was a great addition to the flock and didn't cause any dramas, I decided that the kind of chicken that he was, so he was a partridge rock, wasn't the direction that I wanted to go in with my breeding program. So I moved him and the partridge rock hens that I had out of my flock. And then we were back down to just one grown up rooster being Kowalski. And I thought, well, we'll see how this goes. We're coming into winter and winter is a time where things are quite calm in the flock. There is no hormones raging. The hens are less demanding on a rooster's time. So I kept a cockerel from a late autumn hatch and that was fathered by Kowalski now that Wendell was out of the picture. And I did want to take those genetics of Kowalski through into the future because he is such a cool dude. And that's worked out well. I kept one cockerel and that is Asterion who has been wandering around here behind me. So he grew up in the flock just like Wendell did. And he, he's very chill. He's just like his dad. So he's grown up. He is now over a year old, which makes him a fully fledged adult rooster. And Kowalski has been totally fine with this. He, 
he was he's quite happy with this. Kowalski's stress levels are very low now. He has essentially just made a Asterion do all the hard work. So Asterion has to do all of the crowing when there are roosters around us that crow. It's Asterion's job to answer those crows. And he has to, he has more hens to look after than Kowalski does. So Kowalski has settled to just his original group of five hens. And I have a lot more than five hens and Asterion is looking after all the rest of the hens. And given that he is the son of Kowalski, we'll have to keep an eye on just how long he can manage to keep up with that workload. But so far, he's very happy with it. Keeping in mind that I suspect Asterion is going to be a kind of laziest, very chill dude like Kowalski, his father, I have kept another young cockerel from this season's late hatch and uh, we'll see how that goes. Again, we're coming into the winter time here where things are calm. So that's a great time to raise up a young rooster. He's much less likely to get himself into trouble over the winter time than if it was the springtime when hormones start raging. So we'll see. Uh, the new little guy doesn't have a name yet. We'll see how he fits into the flock, but I'm hopeful that he'll be able to click in and uh, be a valued member. So now you know what roosters I have in my flock and uh, you've met them, so to speak. Let's talk about how this all actually works in practice. How do they all get along and how does it look? So what happens is, in my instance, again, this is my experience. It may or may not work the same way for you. Each rooster has their own preferred hens and they look after those hens and they, they're not mean to the other rooster's hens, but they definitely don't have them under their care and protection. This mostly is only seen during a food time or if one rooster has found a tasty treat in the garden, they will call their hens and they will chase away the hens that are not theirs. And for my dudes, that is a very, <laughs> They don't put a lot of effort into chasing them away. They just sort of say, go, go away. This is not for you. That is not a lot of aggression at all. No one is bleeding. Everybody is happy. And that's really the only time you see that really distinctive split in whose hens are whose. Now that doesn't go across to who actually ends up being the father of the chicks from the eggs that those hens lay. The hens seem to be pretty happy to sort of uh, get around a bit, depending on who they have available, but they are very loyal to the rooster who is looking after them in all other respects. They sleep with their rooster, they hang out with their rooster, they go to their rooster for care. So a note to make about how my flock operates is that each flock, they hang out together, they do everything together, except for sleeping. So they do sleep separately. Kowalski has the flock that sleeps in the chicken coop, the originals that actually, you know, sleep in the chicken coop like they're supposed to. And Asterion has everybody else and they sleep in the trees. So he's got the tree people <laughs> and Kowalski has the coop people. Now that is something to keep in mind. The flocks will be sub flocks. So this is one big flock, but within that one big flock, they do operate as separate flocks. They have separate pecking orders with Asterion having the hens that are more subordinate to the hens that Kowalski has. This might change over time as they get older and older in their original crew, but right now that is how it operates and that's a common theme for chickens in general. Another thing about how this all works for me is when I am raising up the young cockerels that come every year when I'm hatching up chicks, I'm able to raise them up to quite a good age, like over 16 weeks, 18 weeks, 20 weeks, and they can go to that age without really causing any problems at all because having the two mature roosters with Asterion doing most of the uh, beating up job, although he's not that aggressive, it keeps their behavior really tamped down. So you don't have teenage roosters running amok and just bothering the hens and generally making a pest of themselves. They just chill. They don't crow a lot. They just kind of get a sneaky little crow in if they think no one's listening. They don't go bothering the mature hens. They don't bother the younger hens. They just 
go together in a little group of young roosters and cruise around until it is time for them to leave. So that's super beneficial because when I haven't had the mature rooster in the past, those young cockerels can really cause trouble and they can really harass the mature hens and it's just not fun. It's not fun for anyone. So it's really good that I can get them out to that age and not have any problems. Let's talk about the specific things that I do and how that makes the system work and things you really need to know if you're thinking about having more than one rooster in your flock. The most important factor in whether or not you can keep more than one rooster in your flock is space. It's really important that they have enough space and that that space is configured in a way that works for chicken behavior. So my flock have over 10,000 square feet of space always available to them. They are 24 seven free range. They're not locked up at all. So when they wake up in the morning, they're not trapped in a small space together until they get let out. And that is important because the more your birds are crammed up together, the more issues you're gonna have with aggression. So my space is set up, essentially the chickens are in sort of a U shape. So the house is in the middle and they have a U shape of space available to them, which means it's very rare that they have a really good line of sight to each other. There are trees, there are bushes, there are structures all throughout that space that mean they can duck behind things and they're really in a place where they would have more than a few meters of line of sight to each other. And that's very important because they will just forget that they're having a problem if they can't see each other. <laughs> they really do. And a rooster, if they're having an issue with each other, they can just go away and stay out of the way until the other one calms down and it all just, just goes away to nothing. If they are in, even in a huge space, if that space is just an empty square with nothing in it, they can see each other all the time and they can't have that natural break in aggressive behavior. So space, how much of it and how you have it set up is super important for success. And it's also a good thing to think about just for hens because hens can be aggressive to each other as well. And breaking line of sight is an excellent way to help things just stay calm and chill for everybody involved. The second thing to keep in mind is that I have this whole flock operating in a family sort of structure. I have not gone and said, I'm going to have two roosters. I've gone to buy a rooster and brought him home and just let him go with another rooster already here. That's not how I've done it. As the roosters have come into the flock, they have hatched out as chicks, been raised up by the hens in this flock. They've grown up, they've learned who everybody is, they've learned where they fit in the order of things. And they've been able to learn from their father about how they're supposed to be a good rooster. And I do believe that is an absolutely essential part of success with multiple roosters. I'm sure it can work in other configurations, but it will be much more challenging. So the family structure of how the roosters come into the flock and find their place in it is really important. The breed of your rooster matters a lot. So all of the ones that I have talked about here today, particularly Kowalski and Asterion, they are barred rocked and Asterion is a barred rock Orpington cross. So these are big, heavy, <laughs> kind of lazy breeds of chickens. They're not that motivated to do a lot of physical effort. They don't even like to run very often. So they're not that motivated to actually have an aggressive fight with each other. That is not the case for all breeds. Lighter breeds have a lot more energy. They can move a lot easier so they can fight with less, uh, with less effort to put into it. And any breed that has game in its name, so American game bird, uh, Old English game fowl, they have descended from birds that were for fighting. That is what game means in the breed name. It means that they are fighting birds. Not anymore, but that is their breed descent. So you're unlikely to be successful keeping those breeds together unless you have a lot of space and you're, you're very careful with it. Because most breeds, the heritage breeds, 
they, they'll have a fight, then one will yield and it will be over. Some roosters do not have that yield in their makeup. They will not yield and they will fight to the death. And that's not pretty and it's probably not what you want to have happen. So keep in mind what breed, what are they for, <laughs> all of those considerations when you're thinking about this. Not all roosters are going to be able to live in this situation. You need to have enough hens for each rooster. Now a general ratio is one rooster to 10 hens and that, that it can go all over the place. But generally speaking, one to 10 is good. Kowalski can't really cope with having that many hens and Asterion is managing to have more. But if I had only 10 hens and two roosters, I very well could have problems. More is not necessarily a problem. It just stresses the roosters out if they have too many hens to manage. So don't think you can have three hens and two roosters. It is not gonna work out. You do need to have good numbers of hens to be able to have more than one rooster. They will separate out into sub flocks. It's going to happen. So you want to have multiple coops or multiple places for them to sleep because the original or the dominant rooster, he is not going to let the subordinate rooster or the second rooster bring his flock into the sleeping space with them. They're quite, they're quite into keeping their own separated spaces for sleeping. So if you're going to bring in a second rooster or raise up a second rooster, make sure you're prepared for when that rooster grows up and has his own hens under his care, he has somewhere to take them to sleep and they're not gonna be arguing about it. You want to avoid situations where they have a reason to argue. And talking about reasons to argue, one of the main reasons is Food. So that's where you're going to see most of the dominance issues play out and probably the most aggression. So multiple feeding stations is absolutely essential. I have like nine or 10 different little feeding stations that my chickens can access. So no more than two or three of them ever need to share one space. And I put them around the corner. So I'm breaking line of sight. So that is something to keep in mind. You need multiple feeding stations and ideally out of sight from wherever everybody is eating, that they can be separated while they eat and you will avoid a lot of problems making sure that is the case and having more than one water station in case you have a rooster or an often a hen who just decides that she's gonna park up there and not let anybody else come in. If she can't do that because there's another waterer, she'll get bored of that game and everyone will just go back to being happy together. And the last thing to think about in terms of will this work for you is do you have enough for your chickens to do that they're not going to get bored? Do they have places to scratch, bushes to sleep under? Do they have things that keep them active and engaged in their space? If they're just in an in a big open space with not much to do, then what they are going to do to amuse themselves is be mean to each other. So make sure that they have an enriched environment, that they're living their best chicken lives and they're gonna be happy and not interested in being aggressive with each other. There are some important things to consider if you're thinking about doing this. And the first thing is noise. Roosters crow. More than one rooster, they crow even more. So if you have neighbors or you are a light sleeper, it might not be the best choice. They will have crow battles and the morning crowing is a call and response situation. One will crow, the other one will crow. One will crow, the other one will crow. And it can go on for quite a long time. During the daytime, my roosters don't tend to crow a heck of a lot, but they do. Every day they might have like a little period where for 10 minutes, they're just gonna crow back and forwards. And then they'll be quiet for hours and then they'll kick off again for another 10 minutes. Crow, 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 crow. It can be a lot. So keep that in mind. The more you have, the more they are going to crow. It is a fairly common situation where the dominant rooster will get old or maybe get a little bit injured or it might be molting and just be a little bit weaker. And the subordinate rooster will use that as an opportunity to take the top spot. And in that case, they may have a fight and it could not go well for the previously dominant rooster. I don't think it's gonna happen in my situation because my two roosters are just so lazy. <laughs> 
they've already kind of equaled out in who's dominant, but it is a common thing that does happen. So you need to be aware that it could happen. It's a risk. You need to accept the risk. And speaking of accepting risks, chickens are gonna chicken. Everything might be 100% fine and it might have been fine for years. And then five minutes later, it isn't fine and you have blood and fights and chaos reigning. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but it could. So if you are running a, an open system with everyone sort of around and together and happy, you have to accept that at some point they might not be happy and things might go bad quickly and you might have to step in. It's a risk that I'm willing to accept, but it might not be a risk that you're willing to accept. But always remember that chickens are chickens, they do things that make no sense at all from our perspective and you need to be okay with whatever risk it is that you are introducing when you operate outside of a strict controlled system with your flock. What I do here with my flock might not be right for everyone and that's totally fine. I just wanted to show you what I do and how it works for me and you can think about whether it would work for you or not. It definitely won't work for every rooster. You have to have a compatible flock structure, but I feel like roosters get a bad rap a lot of the time. It's like people assume that they are just criminals. And I am here to say, hashtag not all roosters. They're mostly really, really awesome dudes. And most of the problems that come up are due to handling and management and just people making things harder than it needs to be for the rooster to just go and do his roostery job. Some roosters are aggressive. Some breeds of roosters are more aggressive than others. But in general, if you stay out of their way, they'll be fine. So I love the way I run my flock. I love my roosters. It works really well. And I hope that if you decide to go down this pathway, it works really well for you too.